What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Life Family, a place where we learn God's word and build our faith super strong. And today, like uh, I'm back with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities, and we're gonna be analyzing one of the scriptures, uh, one of the uh, articles from the devotional, studying God's word together, building our faith strong. Today's title we're talking about: He runs the world through you. And our uh, theme scripture is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 115, 115, verse 16. I'll read on. It says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. So let me read the first paragraph. Pastor Chris says, If you own the house and list it to someone, it will remain yours. Nevertheless, for the period of the release, you can't manage or run the house. The lessee exercises authority over the property and runs it according to the terms of the lease agreement hmm interesting this is this is big so he said today's talking we're, talk, we're talking about he runs the world through you that's god so this is a great analogy pastor Chris says he said the world is ours and god has given it to us to run you know it's like a landlord he says like a landlord that owns a house and then you living in that property and you're paying rent to you're paying rent. I mean, at that period, the, 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 the lease is up. You can do anything. Not, I mean, not anything, but it's your property. You can decide where to live. You can decide where your bedroom is going to be. You can decide what to what colors you're going to paint the walls, depending on the lease agreement. But the fact of the matter, you don't have your landlord constantly coming in to check in on like, oh, uh, how is my house? Did you do this? Did it? No, he's like, you're paying your rent. After the end of the lease, he'll come and look at everything else and then says if you follow the lease agreement and everything. But the point of the matter is, right now, the Lord has put us in charge of the world. You know, I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself because there has to be some context, right? So let's, let's keep on reading a little bit further. Now, uh, I have some few thoughts. I want to say about this, but it says in the second paragraph, Pascal says, In the same way, God has given man this world to run for the time being. He can't, for the time being, he can't run the world. The time will come for him to run the world, but until then, you and I have the divine responsibility to run the world for Jesus. And he'll hold us accountable for how we run the world because he said, The world is, we are joint heirs with Christ. Remember that he says, "The whole, all things are yours, even the world." You know, so we we own this world together with God. We are joint heirs with Christ. And then, so if, when he says, like when people say, um, "How come God cannot change things?" You know, it, there's there's like laws and rules he put in place that he himself cannot violate. I mean, God. I mean, God can do anything. But God has rules that He put in in principles that He 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 follows that He cannot break those principles and break those rules, um, and um, and one of these is so like He so He said He's giving the earth to the to the children of man to run, so He's not in charge. The the world was given actually to man. Remember in um even beginning from the, from from the, from the beginning in Genesis, I'm mixing my words together. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis. I want to look at the scriptures because um. There's a scripture I want to show in Genesis about when when God gave man dominion. It, it just shows you God's mindset from the from from the beginning. His idea was not for him to run this world. His idea was for his kids to take charge. He gave the the earth to the to to man, and that's how the devil came about. Remember this how the devil came about because God gave authority in the world to and and they asked to Adam. But Adam disobeyed God, and that's why he relinquished his authority to the devil. And that's how the devil got authority over the earth and the systems thereof. But we know Jesus came and defeated him. But the authority that Adam, I mean, the devil was running. I mean, we're going to, this is a different topic we're going now. But the devil had the authority of Adam because Adam's authority was above angels. And the devil, remember, was an angel. But when he, Adam disobeyed God, he lost that authority to the devil. And the devil controlled and ruled the world using man's authority because God has given man everything. Um, let me show you this actually. Let me show you this because it's 
So we are reading, I'm reading the book of Genesis chapter 1 and uh, that's from verse 27. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. This is, look, it, you know, like, um, when you look in the book of Genesis, yeah, when you study the scriptures, uh, I, I learned that from Pastor says, any principle from God or learn, anything you want to learn from God's word, always go to the book of Genesis because it reveals God's original thoughts and, I mean, God's original plans and purposes for things. Because if something has a lasting, um, if something is a lasting principle, it usually is revealed from Genesis, from the book of Genesis. You'll find those principles there. But I say this to say, like, this was God's mindset originally concerning man and the earth. What was God's idea? Did God want to just be controlling the earth constantly? No. His idea was to create man for man to control the earth. He made the earth for man. Like we just read. Uh, let's go back to Genesis. Um, the theme scripture says, the heavens, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of man. That was his plan. He gave the earth to us, to man. Let's go back and finish this. Hold on. He says, and God, okay. He said, God blessed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. Over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This is have dominion. It's not even done. And God said, Behold. Uh, no, no, I don't want to go there. Was it there? Yeah, yeah. He says, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. We're looking about dominion. Over the earth, subduing the earth, taking charge, basically. Um, that's what I'm looking at. And it brings out the field. Hold on, I'm just looking at something here. Good evening. Creeper thing. So, God's idea was for man to dominate the earth, to subdue the earth, to have authority over everything. The world was in charge. He was given, He gave man the world to rule. We rule this world, but we have an enemy. That's how the devil came about. And if you remember, you know the story. I'm not going to go through the scriptures, but you can read that book of Genesis. How the devil tricked uh, Eve and caused Eve to sin against God and Adam sinned against God. And that's how they lost the authority. Remember, this authority was dominion over the earth. Man was had a superior, because he was made in the image of God. His authority was superior to the authority of, of angels. So it was kind of, I'll, I'll tell you how the hierarchy was. It was like God, then man, and then angels. <laughs> that was the hierarchy. And then when Adam disobeyed God, he lost that authority, that authority that was given to, the, to dominate the earth. That authority had rulership of the earth, and he gave it to the devil. So now the devil got this authority that was superior to man. And this is how the sin came about. And this is how man used to uh, suffer and his struggles came about. And then Havoc was wrecked because he lost the authority. And the devil gained the authority of that world. I want to show you what it, um, oh man, I was not even planning to go here. <laughs> I was not really not planning to go in depth like this, you know what I'm saying? But, but I think this is where the Spirit of God is leading. Uh, let, me, let me show you something else. So I'm going to show you how the devil, the devil, to prove to you the devil got the authority that Adam lost. So let's go. Let me find this. So we're looking about uh read the book of Matthew. Remember, Jesus was tempted by the devil. So this 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 is a story I want to get into. So it's Matthew, let's look about um Matthew chapter 4 from verse 5. You can read that story from the beginning, but we start from verse 5. He says, the dev then the devil, he's talking about the devil, taketh him up. He, he took her up, he took Jesus. Then the devil taketh him up in the, into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple 
and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto me, and Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt thy, the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory them, of them, and said unto him, All these things I will give, I will give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Why would he say that? He said, he showed him all the kings on the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof. He says, all this, I'll give it to you. Because How would he say give it to him if it, it, it was not his? Remember, this was a temptation. So, this was reality. The devil had gained Adamic authority. The authority of Adam, which was to subdue nations, which was authority over the earth. So, he had this authority and he's saying, I'll give you all of this if you worship me. The world is mine and the kingdoms thereof belong to me. Worship me and I'll, I'll give it to you. And then obviously, read that again, be and then, so the point of the matter, so when he's Adam saying, the, the devil got his authority. Okay, does the devil still have his the, the authority over the earth? Does he still have it? No, I'll show you. No, so, Jesus came and died on the cross. He said, ah, you know what? This is a totally out of your planning to go. <laughs> but, we'll, you know, we'll get into it. I mean, we analyze the scriptures right here. We, we It's a Bible study. I mean, we'll get into deep so we can understand it fully. So we get into this. So I'm going to show you. We looked about, we looked how Adam had the authority and he lost it to the devil. And how Jesus came about and took that authority. That the devil have the devil has no authority no more he's a defeated foe and i'll show you this so i'm in the book of colossians before i get into that i want to show you something so jesus died on the cross right the sins of the world are put on him the devil thinks are oh, perfect he has got him now he's all over they, they 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 bring up false charges and accusations against him they shame him they whip him they spit at him they, 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 they mock him. They strip him naked. They humiliate him in public. The sins of the world are laid on Jesus. He's laid on the cross. He's nailed to that cross. The nails go on his hands. He's put up. The devil thinks it's over. He's won. Remember the temptation I just read to you. He was saying, if you're the son of God, throw yourself from this tall building. He will command angels and they'll come and help and, and they'll rescue he wanted to kill Jesus. But now, he's like, I got him. He's nailed to the cross. They kill him. And then, the sins of the world are upon him. So, he's a captive in hell. Jesus goes to hell. If people, A lot of people think, oh, maybe Jesus died on the cross. I don't know what they think happened. They just think maybe he just came from the grave. No, he, he was a sinner on that cross. Ah, this is a different topic. But we'll, we'll, let's continue on here. The Spirit of God is leaving us. So anyway, the sins of the world are on him. He's a sinner. He goes to he goes to to hell as a prisoner. The devil's prisoner in hell. So they capture him. He's a captive in hell. The devil is like, oh, this was the son of man. This was the son of God. I thought he was the son of God. He performed those miracles. Now he comes in hell where all these demons are. All these demonic forces are the angel and these generals. They're all in hell. Can you imagine that scenario? All the demons. I think that day when Jesus went to hell, there was no demon in, in the earth. All the demons went to hell to, to see. Did he really capture the son of man? Did he really get him? There was a big there was a big time meeting in hell. Because everybody was wondering, is this the son of God? That raised the dead, that healed the sick. We really got him. And all those demons are in hell rejoicing like we got him. The devil, the head, he's sitting on his throne. They're all rejoicing. Oh man, we won. We got him, the son of man. But guess what? So he's in hell. Remember that temptation. The devil is such a proud 
proud, proud creature. He always wanted to be God. He wanted to exalt himself like God. But now the Son of God comes in hell and he wants him to bow to him because he said, remember the temptation. This is the devil. He has no new tricks. If you look at him, it's all about pride. When you look at how he was cast down, it was because of pride. He wanted, he wanted to be God. That's why he was telling Jesus, if you bow down to me, I'll do this. He wants that recognition. So now Jesus is in hell. All the demons are watching. All the demons, the different generals of demonic forces are there. All kinds of demons. And the head demon, Satan himself is there. And they got Jesus as a captive, as a prisoner in hell. Now, the devil wants him to bow. He says, now you're going to worship me. We got you. But Jesus does not bow to the devil. He's in hell. But he refuses to bow. He didn't know this was a, the devil did not know this was a trap. In hell, Jesus defeats all the demonic forces. They all try to get upon him to cause him to bow. And like a force field, he throws him up. He throws all these demonic forces off himself and embarrasses them and he defeats them publicly in front of everyone that was in hell. They see the, the, the devil being whipped. They see him being humiliated publicly. All oh, the force, everybody that was in Because remember, before Jesus came, human beings were, went in Abraham's bosom so you could see hell. Everybody that was dead, they could see hell. There was, there was like Hades and there was like hell. Oh, this is a different topic. I don't want to get deep in there. But the point of the matter, everybody that was dead, Abraham, all the great patriarch, any human being that was dead, they were either in hell or in Hades. And they could see this battle going on. The devil trying to make Jesus to bow down to him and worship him. And Jesus refusing and throwing all these demon forces. So yeah, I'm saying... This is a battle going on in hell. Jesus throws up off himself all these demonic forces off himself. He defeats them. He humiliates them in front of everybody. And he causes them. He walks. He, he, he causes them to march around. You know, oh my God. I know this video is taking long. But. <laughs> yeah, please bear with me. Because I know we. This is. We, we have really gone. I don't think we've gone out of tangent. I think the Spirit of God is taking us somewhere. So, today's video is going to be a bit long. I'm just going to warn you in advance. <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be a bit long. We're going to go back to the Rhapsody in a bit. But I want to give you context. Because people don't people don't have to understand this. So, anyway. You know, like in a, in a back in the day in the Roman... Um, if, you, if, if, you, if you ever watch these Roman movies like Gladiator or... These different Roman movies like back in the uh, gladiator periods. So yeah, like, um, so when the Romans in particular, when they defeated like an army or like a king, you know what they did? They, they took the spoils. And everybody that was caught like captives, they were made to march around in, in public display. You know, when, they, when the generals came back and said, these are the captives we got and these, these are the spoils we got. So they made them march around the city like, yo, we were triumphant, humiliating them. Most of them, they, they marched them around naked to show them we won this battle. We dominated them to humiliate the enemy. Well, this is what Jesus did. He defeated the devil in the greatest defeat ever. And he humiliated the devil in hell in front of all these demons. And he made them march around with all these demonic forces in a parade. Of Vic, he was walking around triumphant. He said, and he made them prisoners in hell, walking around defeated. And he says he he threw up principalities. They tried to make him bow. He threw up all the principalities out of himself, and he took the power and authority the devil had, the power of the kings of hell, the power of, of death, the um, Adamic authority he had. He stripped the devil of all authority, of all power. That's why you can't, you can't be afraid of the devil. He has no power. He only has lies now. Because he was humiliated in hell. In front of his demons. They know it too. Now all they have is lies and tricks. And guess what? Jesus gave us that victory. 
And I want to show you this victory now. And this is where we came to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, he says, He canceled the record of charges against us and took, uh, took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed, look at that, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. He said he's disarmed them and he shamed them publicly. He made them march around in defeat, in shame. Uh, let me read another translation. Common, let's go in common English Bible. Oh, right. He said, he destroyed the record of the debt we own with his requirements that worked against us. He canceled it by nailing it to the cross. When he disarmed the rulers and authorities, and he exposed them to public disgrace by leading them in a triumphal parade. <laughs> the devil and his demons were disgraced. He has no authority and he gave us this authority. So when Jesus defeated the devil and he, God raised him up from the dead, the spirit of God raised him up from the dead, a victor and a champion. We think, you, you know, let me show you this. Oh, this is getting... You gotta bear with me. We gotta bear with me. Oh man. So for Matthew, I'm reading Matthew 28, verse 5. He says, And the angel answered and said unto the unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here. He's risen. As he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Anyway, from verse 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Oh hell! And they came and held him by the feet, worshipped him. That was a hail of victory. He's like, yo, we've won. All hell. And then, from verse, let me read on, from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke, spake unto them, saying, All power, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize the name in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. He says, all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. And he says, based on this authority, I give you charge to go. Because you have my power. The power over the earth. The power over the heavens. The devil has no authority over the earth. We have that power. We run this world. That was the point I was trying to make. I know we went, we went, we went, we had to go all the way to the cross. But I, I want you to, to establish the fact the devil does not run this world. So you don't think like, oh, the devil is in charge. He only got lies and tricks. And it's a system that he set in place. But authority over the earth belongs to the children of God. Because we own this world, remember. Um, where would that be? Uh, Corinthians. Is it first? First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 14, I believe. This is 2 Corinthians. I always mix the two. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 14. Huh. That's not it. Um, oh, oh, no. 21. Verse 21. Let's find it. Let's find this. Let's find this. 321. Let's try that. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, Second Corinthians chapter three verse twenty. It says, "Therefore, let no man gro glory in man, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Caiaphas, all the world, or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God. It is all things are yours, including the world. The world belongs to us because we are joint heirs with Christ, and we have the authority of the Son of God. The devil does not own this world. Don't give." Don't, there's no mistakes about it. Don't let anyone lie to you about that. That was the point I was getting to. Let's go back to Rhapsody now after the, that long detour. But I hope that was helpful to give you context. Anyway. So I think we, the third primary it says, Man, many including some Christians, analyze the events and happenings in the world and wonder why God isn't doing anything to right the wrongs. Well, if you're waiting on God to do something, you're making a mistake. He needs you. He doesn't and wouldn't do anything without you. Until the list runs out, 
and a new earth takes its place. However, until then, the responsibility is ours to dominate and rule this world in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I just read to you, he said, all hail. He says, therefore, go. He says, all power and authority is given to me in heaven and earth. He said, go now. So we have all power and authority to effect changes in this earth. We are authorized in the name of Jesus. This is important. He says, look at it. Look at this. Look at it this way. God wants the whole world saved and sent Jesus to give his life for man's salvation. Yet, he tells us to pray and intercede for the lost. Why does he want us to pray for them? Why does he just make their already legal salvation a vital experience? It is because he needs the right to take action on man's behalf. So he charged us to pray. We are, it's like a man has a will. Despite of God dying, sending Jesus down the cross for every human being, human beings still have a choice to make. God is not forceful with anyone. We, the, the prayer kind of helps God to intervene in a situation. He, 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 he brings God to in the scene. That's what intercession does. Because he said the earth it, it belongs to the children of man. We run it. God can then just come and say, bam, this is what it is. We get saved unless we pray and intercede to give him the right of way, the legal right of way for him to make an, an intervention and to help save souls. That's, that's what it's all about. But let me read this further. It says, take your place as a joint heir with Christ and fulfill your purpose here on earth. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 to 21 puts it in perspective. It says, for the honest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him, of him who had subjected subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Oh, that's a oh, that's something else even. That's a big topic. The whole world wants liberty. Nature. Nature it, itself. The trees, the plants, the rocks, the minerals, they want to be liberated. They're in bondage because of that sin that came into the world. But now we have all authority given to us as sons of God. He says this, this creation is waiting for this son of God to take charge and free them from this bondage. He says the plants are waiting to be freed. The minerals are waiting to be freed. Everything in nature, everything in this world wants to be liberated from bondage. And we have that authority to do so. We'll talk more about that maybe if it, in upcoming videos. But this is... Yeah, this is just something you should have in your, in your mind. He says, The Father looks, looks to us to deliver his creation from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Amen, amen. Let us take this prayer together. Dear Father, I'm your seed, prolonging your days in the earth. Thank you for your power at work in me and your glory revealed through me. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I fulfill my divine responsibility of bringing men and women into their inheritance in Christ through the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can read further studies in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, Philippians 2 13, Psalms chapter 1 15, 15 to 16. And you can read a one-year Bible plan or two-year plan. You just pick whichever one that suits you. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. You know, I apologize if it's been a bit long, but we had to get into some understanding of the scriptures, so it's important. <clears throat> so thank you once again for being, you know, bearing with me and, and being patient. So appreciate that. We're learning God's word together. And I want to welcome if you're the first time being in the channel, welcome to Shining Life Family. I'm glad you're here. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the video. We learn God's word like this daily analyzing the scripture, looking at the word together. So I hope you've been blessed. And I want to pray for all of you. But before that, I want to pray. If you're not born again, I want to lead you into a prayer of salvation. That's number one. So I want you to say this prayer with me and mean it with all your heart. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ 
Son of the living God. I believe he died for me. And God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you said that prayer, congratulations, you're born again. Welcome to Shine Life family. Welcome to the family of God. So I want to pray for you. I pray that God's spirit will mightily rest upon you and upon all your endeavors, that you'll be victorious and successful in all that you're back to do. That the spirit of God will be upon you. That the blessings of God will be upon you. That the favor of God will be upon you. His grace will be upon you, causing whatever to do to turn out for your good, to turn out right. I remove all obstacles. I remove all bondages. In the name of Jesus, you go through in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Congratulations. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.